Hi and welcome! Today I'm back with a watercolor tutorial. It's a super easy and loose floral and it's something for everyone so you don't need to know anything specific about watercoloring. I'm sketching out my flower with water soluble pencils and I'm using colors that I will use later to paint in the flower and I recommend that you use a reference photo if you don't paint a lot of flowers. So I have made cone flowers um, very often and I have them a little bit in mind so I can sketch them from my mind. But if you don't do this every day or more often, I recommend just picking a reference photo, for example from Pinterest, just to know where um, the petals should be approximately and how the flowers look like in real life and then you just scribble out the outlines. It doesn't have to be um, perfect, it just should be um, a sketch of your flowers. The more you hold your pencil at the very end, the looser your lines will be and this will give you that loose watercolor look. I really love to combine lines with colors or with watercolor paints because it gives it more dimension and it doesn't look so flat when it's done. Also for the watercolors I just start by wetting um, the area that I want to paint in and then I dip in the color and when I feel I have too much color I just remove it with my brush. Um, I try to be very loose. I try to not overthink and not be too perfect. One thing you always have to take care of that you don't paint your whole page. Always leave some white space, white areas, because if you paint everything it will look completely flat without any dimension. What I also love to do to add more to the looseness is to blend in the painted areas into the background and therefore I'm just wetting the background and I'm touching some of the painted areas so that the color can flow into the background. I also usually don't work with many different brushes. Normally I have only one or maybe two and that's totally enough. Here I'm using a normal round brush. The paints that I'm using are from Van Gogh. It's that cheap set with 15 colors. It's 12 plus 3. I found that on Amazon and I wanted to try out their watercolors and this is these are the, the best cheap watercolors I have ever used. I think they are really awesome. They are good pigmented and they are super transparent and I really love to work with them. I just keep on playing. I'm adding water to the background and let the colors bleed into it. And I always keep in mind not to color in everything, always keep some white space.
While my flowers are still wet, I'm going in with a water-soluble graphite pencil. Um, I also dip the nib into water to make it wet and so the pigment releases even more and you get a really intense color. You don't have to use a graphite or a black pencil, you also can use your colored pencil for this technique. It just depends on what you want to do and it's always something um, you have to experiment with. I'm using that dark pencil because I want to get a high contrast between the light and the dark areas and that makes the image pop and gives it more dimension. And also here I try to keep the lines super loose. I am alternating between thicker and thinner lines and I just scribble them. I really don't go for any details. I also use a green pencil. The pencils I'm using here are the Derwent Graphite Tint and also the Derwent Ink Tints. Now I'm coming back in with my watercolors to add some touches of red. One thing you also can care a bit about is not to create mud, so don't mix complementary colors or just mix them in certain areas when you know what you want to do. I also, when I mix in some colors, and I'm not sure if it will give me a good mixture or if it will turn out totally muddy, I just start with a little bit because a little bit of neutrals on your um, on your painting will be great but not too much. I'm alternating between the watercolors and my color pencils. Um, what I needed to learn when painting loose is not to do too much. So often less is more and I needed to learn when it's time to stop. Now I'm adding in some more shadows. You have to be a bit careful with those to not add too much to your painting. Usually I use a complementary color of the main color I have to create the shadows and here I used a blue that is complementary against that orange. I dried the painting with my heat tool or you can just let it dry on its own and then I'm adding some splatters. This gives a lot of dimension and vibrancy to a painting. I usually use the colors that I have used for my painting and normally I pick two or three colors. 
um, you have to take a little bit care not to overdo the splatters. This is what I tend to do sometimes. Less is more, I would say. Yeah, and that's my finished page for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope we will see us next time. Bye.